first graders, thanks for coming back to watch the next video. I know why you really came back, because we need to learn more about chameleons. So, once again, my name is Ms. Boyle, and once again, remember there's going to be times when we get to, when I ask you questions, and I won't be able to hear you or see you, but I still want you to say it out loud to a grown-up, or a stuffed animal, or a pet, or a dog, or a brother or a sister. So get something or somebody handy so that you're ready to answer some questions as we wonder about chameleons together and read the rest of this cool book. So let's first go back and look at, think about what we learned last time. So it might have been a while since you watched the last video. We're just gonna do a quick book walk. Think about the things we learned. So here we learned that they can't do a lot of things that other others can do. They're the size of a cat, or they can be as small as a pinky. We learned that they're kind of funny looking, right? And they've got those big bulgy eyes and wrinkly skin. And my favorite page, they've got some awfully weird and wonderful noses. And that their faces look like this. That's what else we learned. And now we're ready to learn some more. So remember, good readers are doing wondering about the book. And here's our chart of the things that we've wondered. So we wondered, do they change color? How big do they get? What do they eat? How old do they get? How do they change color? So those are some of the wonderings that we had together. We're gonna go ahead and do some more wonderings. Maybe you were talking about chameleons yesterday and you're like, you know what? I'm wondering something else about chameleons. So maybe you have another wondering. I think I might have another wondering too. I wonder, are they like, do they like being around other chameleons or do they like being apart? So would they be good at social distancing? Let's see. Do they live together? Do other chameleons like to live with other chameleons? Do they live together? That's another thing that I'm wondering. So I'm gonna write that down because as a good reader, my mind is always thinking and I'm always wondering. So without further ado, let's read some more of our book about chameleons. So we just learned about their grumpy faces. Actually, they don't just look grumpy, they are grumpy. So if two chameleons bump into each other, things can get pretty lively. Lively is another word for exciting. Like things start to happen and you can see they look pretty grumpy and I guess things are about to get pretty exciting between these two chameleons. There's lots of puffing and hissing and sometimes there's a real fight. Well gosh, now I'm really wondering what does a chameleon fight look like? I might have to, I might have to search that video and try to see what a chameleon fight looks like. I'm very curious about that. So it says, a chameleon will fight only with the same kind of chameleon as itself. So we learned that there is about 120 different types of chameleons, and it's interesting. They won't fight with a different type of chameleon. And I guess that makes sense, because if we go back here, I don't think it'd be very fair if this type of chameleon had a fight with this type of chameleon. I don't think that'd be very fair at all. So I'm glad they only fight with the same type. And that's when chameleons do what they're most famous for. They change color. They change color when they fight? I thought they changed color to blend into things. So I had a wondering about do they change color? And you know what? I've learned something new. I thought they changed to like match, like they would change to be on a leaf, they change green. But apparently they change color when they're mad. Maybe your mom or dad does that too, changes color when they're mad. I know I've been, I've been uh, that's happened to me before with my kids. Oh, here's more wonder about that wondering. Lots of people think chameleons change color to match their surroundings. They don't. Learn something new right there. They change color when they're angry or when they're too cold or too hot or when they're sick. And there are some sorts of chameleons that hardly change color at all. Huh, they change color when they're sick. So does that mean a mom chameleon instead of taking a temperature, it just sees what color it is? <laughs> Probably not. I don't think chameleons use thermometers. As a rule though, chameleons don't bump into one another all that often. I suppose it wouldn't be fair to call them lazy, 
but they certainly don't move any more than they have to. And when they do, it's almost always incredibly slowly. Sometimes they stop completely in mid-step as if they've forgotten what they're supposed to be doing. It says a chameleon's feet are shaped like pincers for holding on to the branches tightly. So kind of like that, so they can pinch like that. But if you look closely, you'll see that they're actually carefully peering about. Peering means looking. So they might be frozen, but they're actually looking all around. So let's do what good readers do. Think about what we've learned so far. This is a great time. Talk to that grown up. Talk to that brother or sister. Talk to that imaginary friend. What did you learn so far? Should we do real quick book walk? What did we learn today? So here, oh yeah, we learned that they don't really like other chameleons. And they, yeah, the biggest learning for me, that they don't change color to match their surroundings. They change color to show how they're feeling. Mind blown on that one. And that they move very slowly. Did you remember some of that learning? Good. Now, peering about is something chameleons are rather good at. That's because their eyes can move separately from each other, unlike our eyes, which always move together. So while one eye is looking back over the chameleon's shoulders, the other one is scanning the branches ahead. As soon as it spots something tasty, the chameleon fixes both its eyes on its prey and begins to creep forward, even more slowly than usual. Then it opens its mouth, just a crack, and I'm gonna leave there. I'm gonna read back these uh, these captions. It says most of the chameleon's eye is covered in skin, like the rest of its body. So you can see that's skin, like that's just its little eyeball part right there. You see, and that's all skin around there. It says there's a tiny peephole in the middle that the chameleon sees through. And look, you can see how the illustrator she did like you can see that well, this one eye is looking that way and one eye is looking that way. That is totally different than the way we see. That would be like being able to look this way and that way at the same time. That'd be kind of awesome. It'd be great as a teacher. I wouldn't be able to get away with anything. I'd be able to see it all. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and see what happens. They're moving slowly and it opens its mouth just a crack and flop out shoots this amazingly long tongue with a sticky tip at the end, like a piece of well-chewed chewing gum. So it says chameleons feed on all sorts of creepy crawlies. The big ones also eat small birds, mice, and even other chameleons. So here you can see that this one is getting a creepy crawly, a little bug, grasshopper it looks like. And look how far it went, thwap. And there's a sticky end and it goes Then the tongue flies back and there's a lot of chomping and chewing and perhaps a few bits of insect leg fluttering to the ground. Mmm, yum. It says most lizards gulp their food down without chewing it, but chameleons grind everything up thoroughly. Chameleons chew their food, other lizards don't. I did not know that. And after that, the chameleon just sits there for an hour or two, doing nothing very much at all, looking quite exhausted and still grumpy after all that hard work. That was some great storytelling on the part of the author, uh, Martin Jenkins, about how chameleons eat their prey. So I want you to think about it. How did chameleons eat their prey? I think we should try to act it out. I know, it's silly. Don't worry, none of your friends are there to see ya. So let's act it out together. So let's go back. We're gonna act out what they do. So first, remember, they're looking, but they can look opposite ways. We can't do that in real life. But pretend that you can look at both ways and then you see something. So what happened next, do you remember? Yeah, it starts moving really slowly. So slowly. And then what happens? Let me see you do it. Big long tongue shoots out, grabs onto the creepy crawly. Pulls it back into the chameleon's mouth. Insect parts fall down. And then the chameleon just sits there, happy that it got its meal. Did you act it out? 
I know, it was a little silly, but we did it together. Let's keep reading the rest of this book together. And there you have it. How could you possibly resist a pocket-sized, bad-tempered, color-changing, swivel-eyed, snail-paced, long-tongued sharpshooter? Sharpshooter means that uh, you're good at hitting something with a weapon, which is, for a chameleon, it's tongue. It's really good at aiming and grabbing something. If chameleons aren't cool, then I don't know what is. So this is the author's opinion that chameleons are cool. But I don't know. I have to think. There were some really good reasons. Do you remember some of the reasons why the author said that chameleons are cool? I want you to go ahead and turn to whoever you have next to you and tell them one reason that you think chameleons are cool. What'd you come up with? What do you think is the coolest thing about chameleons? Ooh, the coolest. The author shared a lot of cool things. I think I would have to say for me, the coolest, I don't know, man, being able to, oh, wait, 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 no, no, no. I was gonna say the tongue thing, that is cool. Changing my mind. This one, the swivel eyes, because man, I could really use that sometimes, being able to look to different areas. I've got two kids, so then I could keep an eye on each kid. That would be really helpful. What did you put as your favorite? What did you think of as your favorite, your coolest part about chameleons? Whatever you said, I agree. Let's go back. And we have read this entire book. Now, if you're like me, you thought maybe you knew some things about chameleons, and maybe in this book you learned that some of the things you thought you knew, you actually didn't know. I had that happen too. So what was the most surprising thing that you learned, or the most interesting? What really made you go, huh? I want you to turn and talk to whoever's next to you and tell them what made you go, huh? I think that part that made me go, huh? was that they don't change colors to like as camouflage. I thought they used camouflage to, um, I thought that they changed colors so they could blend in with their surroundings and apparently they don't do that. And that really made me go, huh. So we did a lot of wondering as we were reading this book. We did a lot of learning. We did a lot of thinking. I wanted to go back through our questions, what we wonder about chameleons. And we read a lot of wonderings. And I looked through and you know what we didn't, we got to a lot of them. So we lost, well, let's go to the one of what do they eat? I was wondering about what they ate. And we can go back to our book and we remember, let's say skimming back through. Oh, here we go. And it says chameleons feed on all sorts of creepy crawlies. The big ones also eat small birds, mice, and even other chameleons. So we learned that they eat a lot of insects, but they also, the bigger ones can eat birds. It's kind of crazy to think of. I wonder if they use their big stick, they must use their big sticky tongue to catch a bird. That's pretty crazy. Um, but then some of our questions like, how old do they get? I'm still wondering. The book didn't answer it. So as a good reader, I know that I can read other books about chameleons so that I can answer all of my other wonderings. And you know what? At the end of the book, guess what? you might still have wonderings. I still have wonderings about chameleons. I'm wondering, how do they change color, right? And we wrote that down, like, how does that actually happen? How do they change color? How did they learn to do that? So good readers wonder before they read the book, they wonder while they read the book, and they wonder after they read the book. So thank you so much for reading this book with me and wondering. It is now time for us to do our independent daily reading. So remember, Corona break, still do reading. So we, uh, you might have a sheet that says Wednesday, and this is the second sheet. And it looks just like the one we did last time, where it says, I learned and I wonder. And remember, if you don't have this sheet, a blank piece of paper works just as well. So you have, I learned, I wonder, and you write one thing you have learned and one thing you are wondering about. So whatever nonfiction book you might have laying around, you can read. Probably a different one than the one that you did last time so that you can have new learnings and new wonderings. And you're gonna read for 15 minutes. Remember to set that timer for 15 minutes. And then at the end, you're gonna write down, I learned 
what one thing you learned, and I wonder, and write down one thing that you wonder. I am so glad you came back for class number two and that we got to finish the book, Chameleons. We get to spend one more time this week together, so I hope you watch the next video. Until then, bye first graders, enjoy your reading.